All right, now let's prove that the general power function works. So our definition is, what is the value of y if we nudge x a little bit minus the value of y at the specific value of x we're concerned with? Right, so we're looking at what is the slope at some value of x. So what happens if we move just a little bit away from that? How far up or down do we go? And we divide that by how far we nudge x. Right, so just a little teeny nudge to x. Does y increase? We'll have a positive number here. That means we have a positive change in f of x as x increases. Don't worry too much about that. It'll make more sense with practice. But let's go ahead and set up this function to account for this specific function. Uh, so we're going to define the derivative. We're asking dy dx, which is the same as f prime x. I'm just going to use different notation just so that you're seeing it often enough. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And now I'm going to be lazy. Uh, lamb of stuff x plus h we're now going to say to the power of n minus x to the power of n all over h. Now if you were just watching the Pascal's triangle video we know that for any value of n we go to the nth row and this is going to give us the setup for how we're going to multiply x and h. And so we're thinking x plus h in here to some power n, that's just good old fashioned expanding a binomial coefficient. Uh, we're going to do something along these lines. So what we're going to end up with in this case is we're going to have an x to the n under the one, right? Uh, the outside of the triangle. We're going to also have an h to the n. And then we're going to be subtracting x to the n. And then we're going to have a bunch of stuff in between. Right? So if n was 7, we would then have plus 7. And actually, in this case, we do know that it's going to be plus n. Right? So if we're going to the 7th power, we would have 7x7 times x to the 6, or sorry, uh, 7 times x to the 6 times y to the 1. Right, we're going to have 7 there. We're going to have 7 of the reverse. x times y to the power of 6. Uh, in this case, instead of y, we're thinking h. So we're going to have n times x to the n minus 1 times h. Plus a bunch of other stuff, all of which are going to have higher exponents for the value of h. So long story short, h stuff, right? So there's just a bunch of h's. A whole bunch of h's in those ellipses. Um, if it was, let's take an easy one, uh, x plus h to the power of 4, then we would have x to the 4 plus 4x to the 3 times h plus 6 x squared h squared plus 4 x to the 1 h to the 3 plus 1 times h to the 4. Um, that's harder. It's hard to even say that, let alone listen to it. But basically, it's breaking down along these lines where we've got, let's say for 3. We can look at this. We've already done the math. x to the 3, uh, x squared times y, x times y squared, x to the 0, y to the 3. And this was a y to the 0. Substitute y for h, right? And that's what we're getting here. Let's make this a little bit nicer. Let's say x to the n plus n times x to the n minus 1 times h. Plus, we're going to have, it's going to really be um, n minus 1 plus whatever this number would be. So we could think about how to define that number, and that's what the binomial theorem is really doing, but I'm going to be extra lazy here. I'm just going to make up, let's call it q, right? Some other number. So I'll say q 
write a note to ourselves. Uh, we're essentially, you know, shrug, shrugging our shoulders, just saying some number. 15, seven, doesn't matter. So we've got n times x to the n minus one times h plus q times x to the n minus two times h squared plus a bunch of other stuff. Plus we're going to have a q times h to the n minus two times x squared plus n times h to the n minus one times x to the one plus h to the n. Right? So what's going on in the middle of Pascal's triangle is going to turn out to not be that important. We got this whole big mess, right? So we get this mess over h. Uh, we subtracted n. So here we've got to subtract x to the n and we take the whole thing over h. Right, so here, this is one really messy line of math. Right, so the expansion of x plus h to the n minus x to the n is this whole big mess minus x to the n over h, and this is the limit as h approaches zero. Now, what can we do to simplify this before we try to pull it over to the next page? Well, we can get rid of those x's. That's a nice easy one. Uh, now we've got this h, and we've got all these terms, all of which include an h. That is going to be a really useful thing. What we can do is we can say this whole thing in parentheses, we're going to multiply that by h, and we're going to knock this all down by 1. So it'll be 2 minus 1. Here it'll be n minus 2 minus 1, n minus 1 minus 1 n minus 1. So by bringing this h out, we're factoring it out. This is the same as, you know, if we say h times h of 1 minus 1, well, that's the same as just h to the 1, right, which is what we started with. This h times h to the 2 minus 1, which is h to the 1, h to the 1 times h to the 1 gives us h to the 2, right? So we're factoring out that h and what that means, most importantly, is we're getting rid of the h here. Now, I said we were simplifying, but we're really not. We're pulling a fast one, we're playing a trick on this equation. So we got a bunch of stuff with h's. We still have this h stuff, but we've gotten rid of this h, and we've gotten rid of these two x's, which we don't really need anymore. And hey, check this out. When we get rid of this h, and we divide out these h's, Right, the denominator h, since we factored this out, what we got? We got h times stuff over h. Well, that's just equal to stuff, right? And in this case, that stuff is all of this stuff. Now, here's where stuff really gets good. Actually, stuff has already gotten good. This is a, this is a fun little proof. Uh, so let's set ourselves back up. dy dx equals the limit. As h approaches zero, we're saying some stuff over h. We're saying h times some stuff. We won't cancel it just yet. So we've got n times x to the n minus 1. Uh, we factored out that h. Plus, I'm going to say dot, 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 all the way down to h to the n minus 1. And canceling those x's, that's easy. I don't feel bad about not pulling them over to this page. So this is our limit as h approaches 0. And I apologize that sometimes my h's fall short and look like n's. But what we can do here is we can say those h's are gone. So now we get the limit as h approaches 0 of n times x to the n minus 1. I really want to make sure that I didn't leave an H behind, that they're not sneaking up on me. So n minus 1, if we're in the seventh row, that's, say, x to the power of 6. We didn't mess around with that exponent, right? We just left it as it was. Where we were messing around is with the H's exponent. So we've got 
x to the n minus 1 times h to the power of 1, but we factor that out. So we're left with what is really our rule that we're looking to define. We're trying to build ourselves up to, did I not write it down? Yeah, we're trying to build ourselves up to this point here, and there it is. Now we just need to find out what happens to all this H nonsense. So what matters here is we've got H times stuff plus H times other stuff. and so on. we got all these terms with h's in them. We've gotten rid of this denominator h, and now we can say, all right, what's actually happening as h approaches zero, right? So this is really just, you know, the equivalent to um, y equals mx plus b. If we want the derivative of that, we know it's just m, right? So here x is stuff, and we're asking, all right, how much does this change as this goes to zero? Well, stuff times zero, well, that equals zero. So this goes to zero, this goes to zero. All of this stuff goes to zero as h goes to zero. So we've gotten rid of our h's, and now we've got dy dx equals mx to the n minus one. So there were two pieces of magic we just saw. One was in the limit, one was in the binomial theorem. So the binomial theorem, this is something that I've seen a million times. Honestly, it doesn't really fit that neatly into my head, this binomial expansion thing. Pascal's triangle fits neatly into my head. It's a beautiful little pattern, and it's really easy to piece together, and you can imagine it just going on forever. Uh, it's just a beautiful little map, a little piece of math here. This thing, if you look it up on Wikipedia, you're going to see all these complicated equations, these permutations and combinations and stuff that is cool in its own right, but is just not sitting on the top of my head. But what matters is not the specifics, but the pattern, and specifically this pattern where we end up with a term that is going to be our h, this term on its own to an exponent of 1, times this other term to the exponent of n minus 1. So we know that for n, we're going to have this. We're going to have x to the n minus 1 times h in our basic setup. When we set up our derivative, we are going to have n times x to the n minus 1 times h, plus a bunch of other stuff times h, all over h. And the trick is going to be, how do we get rid of this h in the denominator because once we get rid of that the limit becomes as simple as substituting in zero we aren't allowed to divide by zero if we do we get infinity and that's not answering our question so we do this little bit of factoring to get rid of this h we know that there's going to be this stuff but we know that most of it is multiplied by h so that we're going to be able to handle. But what we end up with is one piece of this whole mess that doesn't have an H in it anymore. We factored that H out so that we could get rid of this H. We factored an H out of all this stuff, but all of this stuff we know still has some H left in it. H squared divided by H is H to the one. Well, that means we're going to be able to say zero times something. In this case, we're saying 0 squared times something. We're going to have all these h's, all these tiny numbers, right, as h approaches 0, we know that those go to 0, and we can just eliminate them entirely, and we're left with our answer. Cool. So that was the general power function rule, um, just for the form of x to the n. We haven't put in, say, a times x to the n, but that's just a matter of applying the product rule. That we will do separately.